Recording in progress. Hi, friends. Very good evening, all of you. I hope all of you are doing great. Today, we are going to start with the new scheme of CA, um, ICA uh, for May 2024 onwards. I have already told you a couple of times that there are no major changes as far as financial management uh, subject is concerned. And also, for your information, costing, there is no change. Then um, financial management, there is absolutely no change. Advanced accounting, yes, there are certain changes. Then uh, auditing, certain little minor changes. Strategic management, there are certain minor changes. There are certain inclusions also in the new scheme when you compare with the old scheme. But as far as FM is concerned, rather I can say 90-95%, it is same. So you really, uh, you don't need to worry a lot about, you know, Pawansar, old scheme, new scheme and all. But as far as the examination pattern is concerned, there is only one thing now, the new scheme. There is no old scheme now. And ICI this time, they have not even given one or two uh, attempts for transitional period, you know, for those students who are converting from old to new, nothing. They said from May 24 onwards, it is only going to be new scheme and simultaneously there won't be any old scheme. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. This is Institute of Chartered Accountants of India's website, Board of Studies, BYS Live. So uh, in this financial management paper, if you look at it, this is the CA inter syllabus, new scheme. Paper one, you have advanced accounting. Paper two, corporate and other laws. Paper three, taxation. Uh, part A, income tax. Part B, indirect taxes. Then paper four, cost and management accounting, paper five, auditing and ethics, paper six, FM and SM. So basically four, five, six are in group two. One, two, three are in group one. So this FM and SM is one paper now, financial management, 50 marks and strategic management, 50 marks. Okay. So uh, we have live classes on every Saturday and Sunday, and I will share the schedule with you. Okay, Saturday and Sunday, not, not all the classes are for financial management. There are certain classes for FM, certain classes for SM, certain classes for audit, certain classes for, uh, you know, during the weekdays for advanced accounting also. I'll share the uh, schedule with you and whatever the subject you joined for, that particular subject you can attend. Okay, now if we go to FM and SM part A, financial management, you have two modules. So when you go to module one, you will see the syllabus. So since this is a new batch and you are learning everything afresh, whether you are a repeater or whether you are attending classes for the first time, I want you to have a notebook, ICA textbook if you have, CAP classes if you have joined CAP classes and if you have uh, sent that PDF, take a printout or if you have purchased a book, excellent. Have that book also, calculator, pen, pencil, highlighter. These are the things you need to have. Okay. And also, as I tell in every class, although it is an online class, whether you are attending live or you are attending recorded class through Google Drive, you know, PC version or mobile app version, whatever, however you are learning, whatever the method of uh, delivery is, I want you to be formal. Even if you are using mobile or laptop, put it on a proper table, on a proper, uh, you know, uh, what we call that uh, mobile holder, have a book, pen, and as if you're attending a physical lecture, please be formal, please be very careful and learn. Okay, don't be informal, don't be casual. This casual informal attitude that might bring irresponsibility, that is only my concern. Okay, so open your notebook. After praying your favorite God, whatever you want to write on the first line, based on your belief system, based on your uh, religion or based on whatever it is. Open a fresh page and then start with the syllabus. Financial management, paper 6A, put the heading syllabus. Okay. When I was a student, not now, when I was a student, I used to start with Sri Ramajayam. I used to start with, you know, something, whatever, whoever your favorite God is. Okay. So please open a notebook, your favorite God, whatever the quote you want to write. And then fresh page and then write down syllabus. Syllabus. I'm writing syllabus here. Chapter 1 in syllabus. CA inter. Financial management. 
new scheme syllabus under that write serial number chapter serial number chapter serial number one chapter is scope and objective of financial management scope and objective of financial management this is chapter one chapter two types of financing chapter two types of financing chapter two types of financing this is also known as sources of finance which is basically theory so this is theory this is also theory three ratio analysis ratio analysis normally one question will come mandatorily from ratio analysis topic one question mandatorily comes from ratio analysis topic then four cost of capital five capital structure cost of capital capital structure six leverages six leverages are you right leverage analysis six leverages or leverage analysis seven investment decisions which is nothing but capital budgeting investment decisions or capital budgeting eight is dividend decisions eight is dividend decisions and nine is working capital management again in working capital management there are six units out of which four units are relevant remaining two units one is inventory management one is theory inventory management you have studied in costing that's all even in even when you open ICA in new scheme study material also they will tell inventory management is similar to whatever you have learned in costing so this is the syllabus this is the syllabus total 50 months total 50 months examination approach question paper techniques abc analysis what is important what is not important all these things we'll see at the end of the syllabus okay so while studying we will cover 100 percent of the syllabus while studying while learning there is no abc analysis okay maybe one month before exam or two months before exam when you are preparing for the exam then you can do some you know study strategy then you can do some filtering and all based on the uh, relative weightage of uh, the chapter you can do something later but not now now we'll do everything so in the chat box please let me know have you done writing this have you copied this in the chat box please let me know i'm looking at chat neha said yes what about others tarun said yes Yes, done, done. Very good. Excellent. I want extensive participation, whether I am taking a physical class or online class. I always prefer each and every student attending class. See, nowadays what happened? The ratio of students attending live class and recorded class, if I tell you, if 100 students uh, joined my financial management class, you won't be surprised if I say 90 to 95 percent of the students are saying, Pavan sir, I want recorded class. It is because, you know, they cannot travel or some reason. Maybe they are doing article shape, time schedules and all. Okay. Majority of the students are looking for recorded class. But those minority of the students in terms of numbers, I mean, those who are attending this live classes, I want everybody to extensively participate. If I'm asking question, please try to answer. Okay, so I have seen out of my, you know, experience, I have seen 
some of the students faced difficulty in working capital management and normally we start with what is the meaning and definition of financial management financial management is so and so which is actually kind of boring okay so i want to start with working capital management because people feel it is difficult let me show you how easy it is having said that i am not skipping scope and objective of financial management we'll come to it We'll definitely come back and complete theory. So all these things we'll discuss. Normally, types of financing, sometimes I'll give for uh, self-study because it is only theory like, you know, what are the characteristics of equity share capital? So it starts like that. And then maybe probably it goes to bridge finance. It goes to venture capital financing, angel funding, private equity, then, uh, you know, euro bonds. Uh, American depositor receipts, global depositor receipts, foreign currency convertible bonds, masala bonds. Why I am not uh, dealing with this is because majority of the students have covered all these things in their degree already. In BCom, you might have studied all these things. If you have some doubts, then we'll see. But 99% of the syllabus, whatever is there in ICA book, will cover. And I'll also give you a separate book, whether it is in PDF or a printed book, I'll also give you a separate book. So we'll start with working capital management. So I request you to open a new page and put the heading working capital management. Okay. So before that, may I ask you, if you have already studied FM somewhere, may I ask you, FM deals with three decisions. What are they? Can someone tell me in the chat box, please? Financial management deals with three decisions. Can you please tell me what are these three decisions? I'm waiting for your answer. Can I say financing decisions? Very good. Investment decisions? Dividend decisions? Correct, Ashwin. Very good. Investment decisions? Financing decisions? Dividend decisions? True. So, which one is working capital? Working capital, is it one, two or three? You tell me. Working capital management, is it one or two or three? Tell me in the chat box. Ashwin is saying working capital is financing decision. Okay, very good. What about others? Some other student is saying one. Arvind is saying one. Tarun, one, 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 one. one. Okay. One very interesting thing is working capital management is a combination of one and two. Interesting point. Working capital management is a combination of one and two. That is clearly written in your CA textbook also, new scheme textbook also. I have studied each and every letter of new scheme textbook. Not that I do not know what it is, but I just wanted to see what is the difference. And after that, I realized there is no difference. Even the examples and the questions, illustrations, there is no difference. Okay. So, so investment decisions refers to investment decisions refers to where the available funds are to be invested in, where the available funds are to be invested in. So there are two types of investment decisions. There are two types of investment decisions. One is investment in fixed assets. One is investment in current assets. First one is investment in 
fixed assets. So this is investment in fixed assets. This we study in capital budget. Here it is investment in current assets. This is investment in current assets. Investment in current assets. This is working capital. So, from this can I say, working capital management refers to managing current assets. That's all. Managing current assets. So, investment decisions are of two types. Long-term investment decisions, short-term investment decisions. Long-term investment decisions are investments in fixed assets. Which asset I should invest in? Which uh, uh, project I should invest in? Which new business I should start? Which new branch I should start? All these things are capital budget. Expansion programs, acquisitions, all this. And investment in current assets is working capital. Okay, now, may I ask you equation from accounting point of view? What is working capital equation? So can you tell me something like A minus B is equal to C, something like that? There are certain equations now. So can someone tell me what is the equation in which we can calculate working capital? Can someone please tell me what is the equation in which we can calculate working capital? Asset less liabilities. Current assets minus, current assets minus current liabilities. Yes, very good. Current assets minus current liabilities. Correct. Someone is saying in the chat box, assets minus liabilities. No, it is not assets minus liabilities. Okay, if you say assets minus outside liability, that gives you owner's fund. That is accounting equation. That is not working capital management. Okay. So, can I say, can I say that this is working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities? Working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. So, I will forward this particular material to you. In this, if you look at it, I have started it like this. In accounting terms, working capital is defined as the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Therefore, working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. Then I have given one problem. Okay. So, Neha, are you there in the class? Yes. Neha, can you read question number one? Yes, sir. From the details given below, calculate the working capital of X limited. Cash is uh, 20,000, accounts payable 25,000, accounts receivable 15,000, short term borrowing 5,000, inventory 45,000, accrued liabilities 10,000. So I'm giving you just one minute of time. One minute means one minute, 60 seconds, that's all. So in this 60 seconds, all of you, Use your calculator or, you know, paper and pen. And can you tell me what is the working capital? All of you start working on that. Calculate what is working capital from this. I want to answer in the chat box. I'm giving you one minute of time. So read question number one from the screen, calculate working capital and tell me the answer. Let me see who will tell first. Radha Krishnan is saying in the chat box 40,000. Amalesh James is saying 40,000. Hello, what about others? There are so many others in the class. I want answer from everyone. Very good. Someone else is saying 40,000.
Sirisha is saying 45,000. Interesting, different answer. What about others? Another 10 seconds, 15 seconds you can take. Please complete that and tell me. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Tarun is saying forty-five thousand. I don't know. Shall we see the answer, Neha? Tan, 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 tan. Who all said forty thousand? Who all got forty thousand? Correct answer. So there are six items in the question. Three current assets, three current liabilities. Cash is a current asset. Twenty thousand. Add. Accounts payable is a current liability, minus 25,000. Accounts receivable is a current asset, add 15,000. Short-term borrowings is a current liability, minus 5,000. Inventories is a current asset, add 45,000. Accrued liabilities is a current liability, minus 10,000. So it is plus 20,000, minus 25,000, plus 15,000, minus 5,000, plus 45,000, minus 10,000. Now you tell me what is the answer. Is it this? Yes, 40,000. We have completed one question also. Wow. Calculation mistake. That's fine. We can do mistakes in the class, but we cannot do mistakes in the exam because ICA is a very strict parent. Okay, so after that, I have given you the meaning of working capital management. Now we have seen what is working capital. We have seen what is working capital. Working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. Now what is working capital management? Working capital management is basically a process, a managerial process. Where we ensure that an organization operates efficiently by monitoring and utilizing its current assets and current liabilities to the best effect. So what do we do? We manage current assets and current liabilities. The primary objective is to enable a company to maintain sufficient cash flows in order to meet its day-to-day -day operating expenses and short-term obligations. Now you tell me, ability, ability to meet this is called what? Ability to meet this is known as, can someone tell me in the chat box, your ability to meet day-to-day -day operating expenses and payment of short-term obligations is known as what? Liquidity. Very good. Liquidity. There are two types of liquidities, short-term liquidity, long-term liquidity. It is also known as solvency. Short-term liquidity is this, the ability to pay whenever uh, there is a bill. It is simple. You know, you need to pay electricity bill today. You should have enough cash in hand. You need to pay water bill today. You should have enough cash. You, you are supposed to pay rent today. You should have enough cash in hand. You need to pay salaries. You should have enough cash. You need to pay advanced tax today. You need to have enough cash. You need to pay TDS. You need to have cash. So you need to basically have sufficient cash flows to meet day-to-day -day operating expenses, it can be salaries, it can be administrative expenses, it can be bills, it can be telephone, it can be internet, it can be, you know, any type of uh, facility. Or these are your short-term obligations. Like short-term obligation can also be, for example, payment of EMI, bank EMIs, you need to pay interest. Isn't it? So this is called short-term solvency. Long-term solvency is measured with debt equity ratio. So, so solvency is of two types. Solvency or liquidity is of two types. Short term solvency, long term solvency. Short term solvency is measured by working capital or current ratio, your ability to have a better, a strong current ratio. Long-term solvency is measured by, can anyone tell me long-term solvency? How can you measure long-term solvency? 
how can you measure long term solvency by using debt equity ratio or gearing ratio interest service coverage ratio debt service coverage ratio preference dividend coverage ratio all these things will show your ability to pay you know these kind of capital things so if you look at the difference short term solvency is for short term bills and operating expenses long term solvency is basically for loans and capital you understand short term solvency is for your day to day expenses long term solvency is repayment of your loans long term loans you understand you understand so the primary objective is liquidity now have you heard gross working capital, net working capital? So can you please tell me what is the meaning of gross working capital? What is the meaning of net working capital? Have you heard this? Very good. Gross working capital is nothing but sum of that means total of current assets networking capital is current assets minus current liabilities and that's all so that is what by definition they are saying working capital on the basis of value it can be gross it can be net so what they are saying gross working capital refers to investment in current assets that means simple sum of or total of current assets Networking capital refers to difference between current assets and current liabilities. On the basis of time, this is called classification of working capital. The diagram you see on the, on the screen, that is called classification of working capital. On the basis of value, it is classified into gross net. On the basis of time, it is classified into permanent or fluctuating. So, have you heard permanent working capital fluctuating or uh, variable? So, can someone tell me what these two are? So, basically, permanent working capital is the working capital required to carry out minimum level of operations at all the times. That means you need it permanently. Pavan sir, do I need that in Jan? Yes. Do I need that in Feb? Yes. Do I need that in December? Yes. Do I need that in summer? Yes. Do I need that in winter? Yes. Pavan sir, do I need that in season? Yes. Off season? Yes. So you need to have certain amount of working capital throughout the year. Say for example, capital required to pay uh, working capital, you know, the cash you need to maintain to pay rents, salaries. These are fixed costs, right? So if you, you know, if you take any house on rent, you need to pay 25,000 per month. So you know that every month it is 25,000. Or even if it is increasing, you know how it is increasing and all. So this is basically fixed in nature. But... Normally, you know, even in costing, you might have uh, studied economic order quantity, you might have studied inventory holding policy. So, in general, what companies uh, do is they will maintain some inventory level. Say, for example, if uh, I'm running a provisional store or if I'm running a medical shop, I know that these uh, medicines are required at all the times. So, 2 lakh rupees worth medicines are required at all the times. But imagine if it is going to be a winter or a rainy season where flu, pneumonia or cold, these kind of things will increase. Maybe certain types of medicines you need more. It could be Amrutanjan Jandubam kind of things or it could be vaporizers or it could be, you know, some uh, paracetamol tablets or it could be, it could be flu uh, vaccines. So in that particular three month season, you need to maintain more stock. So throughout the year, you maintain some amount of fixed working capital 
to carry out minimum level of operations, fluctuating working capital is during some part of the year, you may need additional capital, additional working capital to meet seasonal demands. This is over and above the permanent, fixed or permanent working capital. So this is also known as fixed working capital. This is also known as fluctuating variable working capital, fixed working capital, variable working capital. So now can I say total working capital is equal to permanent working capital plus fluctuating working capital. Do you agree with me? Guys, do you agree with me? So, Pavan sir, what is the difference? Why do I, why should I classify, differentiate between this permanent working capital and fluctuating working capital? It is because, it is very, very, very important. It is because fixed working capital is financed by reserves. That means equity. Or long-term loans, which is debt, but both are long-term coins. This is the reason. When it comes to variable working capital or fluctuating working capital, this is fixed working capital. This is permanent working capital. Variable working capital is financed by bank OD or short-term borrowings. This is the difference. So if you know that the total working capital required is 5 crores. In that, you know that 2 crores is relatively permanent in nature. 3 crores is variable. So if you know that total working capital required is 5 crores. In that, in that permanent or fixed is 2 crores. Variable or fluctuating is 3 crores. So, this is, you know, financed by your retained earnings. That means when you are announcing dividends, you will try to keep some money aside and you will tell shareholders that, hey, we are in need of working capital, which is fixed in nature, which cannot be financed by short-term borrowings or working capital loans or overdrafts. So I am keeping some money out of earnings side because around the year, 365 days, we need that. It is financed by returned earnings. If it is fluctuating, then probably you might go to any bank or financial institution and you will ask for a Working capital loan financed by working capital loans or what do we call bank holding. That's it. So this is the discussion about the second classification. What is the first classification on the basis of value, gross working capital, net working capital, on the basis of time, permanent working capital and fluctuating working capital. So permanent working capital refers to the base working capital, which is the minimum level of current assets you need at all times to carry out minimum level of operations or minimum level of day-to-day -day activities. Temporary working capital is that part of working capital which is required by an entity in addition to permanent working capital. It is also called variable or fluctuating, which is used to finance short-term working capital requirement due to fluctuations in sales volume, etc. Because throughout the year, you might not uh, sell same number of units. Even you might ask, but Pavan sir, every business cannot be seasonal. No, there are seasonal businesses. There are businesses which are not seasonal. But even if you look at Pepsi, Coke kind of companies also, do you know they sell more during December? You might be wondered, but you know, majority of students ask Pavan sir, 
Pepsi and Coke, they sell more tins during summer makes sense. But December, it is freezing in many parts of the world. So do you think in December and Jan, Pepsi and Coke sales are high? Yes, due to Christmas, Christmas and New Year Eve. So you know that you, you have been in the business for the last so many years. Maybe probably Coke is more than 100 years old company, 130, 135 years old company. So you know that during this particular season, you need more number of tins. So you will not start manufacturing that in December. You might start probably somewhere in April, uh, somewhere in August, September, manufacturing more units. So last month, you asked your factory manager to produce 1 lakh tins. Now you asked your manager to, uh, to produce 1 lakh 25,000 tins. Why? Because after one month, two months, there will be festive season. Now, obviously, to manufacture one lakh units, what is the inventory required? What is the wages you need to pay? What are the overheads you need to incur? How many laborers you need to recruit? That obviously will be lesser than when you manufacture one lakh twenty-five thousand units. So, obviously, when you ask your factory supervisor to manufacture one lakh twenty-five thousand units instead of one lakh, he will ask you for more raw material. He will ask you for more labor force. He will ask you for more, uh, you know, um, authority to incur overheads, mm -hmm. isn't it? So that is your additional temporary working capital. So these are the two diagrams. So temporary can be fluctuating like this, or temporary can be, you know, this permanent can be fixed curve like this, or permanent also can be a curve like this. But no need to think too much about it. If you remember this diagram, that is more than enough. 99% in the exam theory won't come from these kind of areas. But conservatively, imagine if, uh, you know, CA Institute asks this kind of question. What do you mean by fixed working capital or differentiate between fixed and variable working capital, permanent and fluctuating working capital? You need to remember this uh, table. You need to remember these two points, point number three and point number four. Write it. And that's it. You understand? Now, we are going to one of the most interesting and important areas. Now, look here. The required working capital is required working capital is 10 crores. Now, situation one, you are maintaining 14 crores of working capital. Situation two, you are maintaining 7.5 crores of working capital. So this is alternative one, this is alternative two. You tell me each and every one, you tell me in the chat box, which one you think is a better plan? When you need 10 crores, keeping 14 crores in your hand or keeping 7.5 crores in your hand, which one you think is better? I want answer from you. Tarun is saying 7.5. Okay. What about others? Malesh is also saying 7.5. So, Tarun and Amalesh, what will be problem if I carry 14 crores in my hand? You are saying you want to hold 7.5 in this situation if you are the business owner. Okay, Amalesh is saying loss of interest. Very good. Very good. I really appreciate it. loss of interest. Okay, but what about loss of reputation if you are unable to pay? So, you need 10 crores. You are having 7.5 crores. That means those balance 2.5 crores which you are unable to meet on the promised day. So you told someone that you will pay some money and you are unable to pay. What about loss of reputation? Can you accept it? Now you tell me which one is bigger? Loss of interest is a bigger risk or loss of reputation is a bigger risk? So let us have a healthy discussion. You know, you'll you'll understand the practical facets of finance also. Loss of reputation is a bigger risk. Correct. You're right. Loss of reputation is a bigger risk. So shall we hold 14 crores in hand? Shall we maintain 14 crores of working capital?
maintaining 14 crores of working capital is wrong. Maintaining 7.5 crores of working capital is also wrong because here liquidity is high. Here liquidity is high but profitability is low. Here liquidity is low. Profitability is high. You might ask Pavan, why profitability is high or low here? Reason. If you hold more working capital, if you hold more working capital, you need higher amount of bank loans that results in high interest. Isn't it? Isn't it? Try to understand this. So you are maintaining 14 crores. That means you are you are having more working capital in your hand. That means you have higher amount of bank ODR loans. Or even if you say, Pavan sir, I'm using my own money, even then there is opportunity cost for equity also, right? So maybe you are keeping that 4 crores idle and you are paying interest. So guys, do you understand this box? I have written something in a box here. Do you understand this? If you hold more working capital, you need higher amount of bank loans. That results in higher interest cost. Isn't it? Guys, do you understand this logic? Very good. Very good. Excellent. So here, here, if you maintain lower amount of working capital, you end up paying less interest, but you won't honor your promises towards short-term bills and creditors. This is the problem here. You will not be able to pay bills. You will not be able to meet your commitment towards your creditors. So if you do not pay to your supplier on time, what happens? Next time he will not give you credit. He will tell you, Pavan, if you pay me amounts regularly on the promised dates, I will sell goods to you on credit. But when you default even one times, you paid properly 100 times, and if you default one, two times, I can understand. But if you are regularly defaulting, I will not give, you know, credit to you. I will not sell goods to you on credit. Pay cash. That is such a big risk. That is such a big risk. So, maintaining 14 crores is wrong. Maintaining 7.5 crores is wrong. So, what is right? Maintain 10 crores. Now the question is, how do I know that I need 10 crores exactly? How do I know I need 10 crores exactly? That is not a rocket science. You are not an astrologer. You know, you are not, you know, predicting something about future. You are just forecasting, dude. That's it. This can be a very easy task. So for this, what you do is, you forecast working capital requirement. Finance managers in finance team, what they do? They forecast working capital requirement. Next month, what would be our inventory level? Next month, what would be our debtors? Next month, what would be our cash and bank balances? Next month, what would be our short-term investments? Next month, what would be our current liabilities in terms of accounts payable, bills payable? Okay, short-term borrowing. So, simple. So, you calculate current assets, current liabilities and then you calculate working capital. So, guys, try to understand when you have done this, when you have done this, even a small kid can understand that working capital is 40,000. Here. Even a small kid can understand that working capital is 40,000. But the difficult thing is cash 20,000. How? Accounts receivable 15,000. How? 
Now, try to understand the difference between accounting and other branches of accounting, namely costing, management accounting, uh, financial management. So, in accounting, financial accounting is always historical. That means you account for past transactions. Costing, management accounting, financial management are not historical. They are they are decision making and planning devices or tools. So, so you forecast things for future. So, working capital requirement you will never calculate for. Say, for example, we are sitting on, say, for example, today's date is. 25th November 2023. So, sitting on this date, we do not calculate working capital for October 2023. No fool, you know, on this planet will calculate working capital for October 2023. No. You will calculate for quarter 1 of 2024 calendar year. That means Jan, Feb and March 2024. So you calculate working capital for Jan, Feb and March so that if you know that it is 10 crores, you will try to mobilize that. Otherwise, today if I realize that I don't have money, what will I do? It should be planning. So how do I calculate the level of accounts receivable to be maintained? The level of inventory to be maintained, everything is planning. What will be my accounts payable? Now, you might ask, Pavan sir, today sitting in November 2023, can you forecast in 2024 March, what will be my accounts payable? We can. Not only two months, three months. In financial management, if you are making investment decision, if you are starting uh, any plant or any, you know, buying any machinery which has 10 years of life, don't you think you will estimate cash flows for the next 10 years? That means sitting in 2023, you are calculating cash flow of 2033, 2035. Once that is it possible? That is why this financial analyst, chartered accountants, finance managers, finance controllers, these people have this much of demand because they can calculate. But of course, today you have so many artificial intelligence uh, tools also. Today you have so many financial management, financial uh, modeling tools also. Power BI, Excel, these are basics. And you have so many advanced things also. So this is actually working capital management. Now, you have three options. You can maintain an aggressive approach. You can maintain a moderate approach. You can maintain a conservative approach. Now, let us see what is aggressive approach, what is moderate approach, what is conservative approach. This we'll do with the help of a problem. This we'll do with the help of a problem. We'll understand what is this diagram, what is the, everything. We'll try to understand with the help of a problem. Now, let us go to problem number two. Okay. Problem number two will help you understanding this table also liquidity and profitability so highlight this we'll come back to this highlight this we'll come back to this in a while highlight this we'll come back to this in a while okay tarun can you read question number two yes okay read question number two tarun a firm has the following data for the year ending 31st March 2022. Sales, 1 lakh, and 1 lakh units into 20, 20 lakhs. Earnings before interest and taxes, 2 lakhs. Fixed assets, 5 lakhs. The three possible current assets holding of the firm are 5 lakh, 4 lakh and 3 lakh. It is assumed that fixed assets level is constant and profits do not vary with current assets level. Anal analyze the effect of the three Alternative current assets policies. So there are three alternative current asset policies. 
there are three alternative current asset policies. What are they? Holding current assets of 5 lakhs, holding current assets of 4 lakhs, holding current assets of 3 lakhs. Okay. So what will happen if you maintain more current assets? What will happen if you maintain less current assets? Okay. So put the heading solution to problem number two. Solution to problem number two. So we'll write particulars. We'll write three policies. Policy one, working capital policy, working capital policy one, working capital policy two, working capital policy three, working capital policy one, policy two, policy three. So here, current assets. In working capital policy one, five lakhs. Here, four lakhs, three lakhs. Okay, fixed assets is also given. What is fixed assets given in the question that it is 5 lakhs, fixed assets 5 lakhs. So fixed assets 5 lakhs. So can you calculate and tell me total assets? Guys, calculate and tell me total assets. 5 plus 5, 10 lakhs. Then... 9 lakhs, 8 lakhs. Okay. Now EBIT. EBIT. Okay. Given. We don't need to do anything. EBIT. Earnings before interest and taxes given. 2 lakhs. And they said profits will not change based on current assets. So whatever your working capital policy is, at the end of the day, you will get 2 lakh rupees of EBA. There is no problem in that. Okay. Now calculate profitability ratio. Okay. Return on investment, which is EBIT upon total assets into 100. EBIT upon total assets times 100. Can you calculate and tell me what is return on investment in first policy, return on investment in second policy and return on investment in third policy? Can you tell me? Hello, I'm waiting for your answer. Calculate and tell me. Okay, am I getting answers? Still no answer, I'm still waiting. Tarun is saying 20%, 22.22%, 25%. Very good, Tarun. Let us wait for one, two more answers. Sirisha is saying 20%, 22.22%, 25%. Excellent. Very good, Sirisha. What about others? Neha, Adira, Amale, Sharvind. Okay. Correct. So it is this divided by this percentage. Okay, so 20% Adira, correct. 22.22%, 25%. This is return on investment, which is profitability. This is profitability. There is difference between profit and profitability. This is profit amount, profitability rate. Okay, now, now, tell me about liquidity. Or we can also calculate, you know, in ICI study material, if you see ratio between current assets divided by fixed assets, they calculated ratio between current assets by fixed assets. So can you calculate ratio between current assets by fixed assets here? Can you calculate ratio between current assets and fixed assets? So it is nothing but this is current assets. This is fixed assets. 
this is 1, this is 0.8, this is 0.6. Okay. This shows liquidity. This shows liquidity. So here, if you observe, liquidity is more, profitability is less. Here, if you observe, liquidity is less, profitability is more. So look at this two. Look at this two. And do you confirm with this box, liquidity and profitability? So if liquidity is high, profitability is low. If liquidity is low, profitability is high. So look here. Because you are holding 5 lakhs current assets here, your ability to pay bills is higher than when you hold 4 lakhs. If you are holding 3 lakhs in your hand, 3 lakhs of current assets, probably, you know, you will not be able to pay bills or uh, short-term creditors on time. So, which one is conservative policy? Which one is aggressive policy? Can you tell me in these three? In these three situations, which one is conservative policy? Working capital policy. Can you tell me this policy one, is it conservative policy or aggressive policy? You are holding more money. Are you conservative or are you aggressive? One is conservative. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Tarun. Conservative. What about two? What about three? Aggressive. Two is moderate. So now you understand, now you understand liquidity and profitability are running in two different directions. So my dear friends, please try to understand working capital management is balancing between profitability and liquidity. You don't want anything to go wrong. You don't want profitability to come down. You don't want liquidity to come down. Both you need to maintain. Both you need to protect. That is working capital management. Working capital management is balancing between profitability and liquidity. Is this clear? Do you understand question number two? Do you understand answer for question number two? This is the answer. This is of course ICI answer. Conservative policy, moderate policy, aggressive policy. So guys, any doubts in the things whatever we have discussed so far? If you don't have doubts, please let me know in the chat box. Any doubts in this? Okay. If you have any doubts, please ask.